I am going to read the first scripture coming from Psalms, the 15th chapter and the first verse. And it says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Now, the second verse begins to answer these questions. It says, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. You see, God requires righteousness in our lives. And we are going to have to walk upright before God by living according to the word of God. Because if you are not walking upright before God, you won't make it with God. You see, you must work righteousness like the word of God says and speak the truth in your heart. You don't have to tell the untruth at all. You don't have to lie about anything because lying and cheating won't get you anywhere with God. That's right. Working unrighteousness will keep you out of the kingdom of God. The third verse says, and I'm reading from Psalms, the 15th chapter and the third verse. He that backbited not with his tongue, nor do it evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor. You can't backbite against others. You can't go around saying mean or spiteful things about others. You can't go around making malicious comments behind someone else's back and yet be righteous before God. No, you can't. You can't do evil things to others. You can't cause harm to come upon other people. You can't make someone suffer and cause them to be sorrowful and yet be right before God. No, you can't. You can't take up a reproach against someone else. That is to disgrace that person by rebuking them, by trying to discredit what they're doing by scorning them and showing your disapproval of others, by causing an occasion to blame them of something, subjecting them to censure, and then be right before God. And censor means the act of blaming or condemning someone sternly. It's like passing judgment on others, by finding fault with them, criticizing them as being blameworthy, giving them an official reprimand. You see, when you take up a reproach against somebody else and start passing judgment on people, you are not working righteousness, but unrighteousness. And you need to repent. That's all there is to it. You need to repent. Psalms, the 24th chapter, the third through the fifth verses says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. You need to ask yourself these questions. We all need to ask ask ourselves these questions. Do you have clean hands? Are you pure in heart? Have you lifted up your soul unto vanity? Do you be swearing and swearing deceitfully? Be honest to yourself and answer these questions truthfully. And if you are not guilty of none of these things, you shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness. Psalms 106 chapter and the third verse says, Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times. You see, we are blessed if we live a righteous life at all times, meaning every day. That's right. Every day of the week, we should walk upright before God, not only when we are at church, but we should do righteousness on our jobs, in our homes, towards our children, In our communities, we should do righteousness. Even when we are walking down the street or at the neighborhood store, we should live a righteous life 24 hours every day. Every day that the good Lord blesses us with, we should live a righteous life. Proverbs, the 12th chapter and the 28th verse says, 
In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Now, the word of God is not talking about a natural death in this scripture, because we all got to pass that way. But the word of God is letting us know that there is no eternal death or eternal damnation in the lake of fire. If you are walking in the righteousness of God, but instead you will have everlasting life with Jesus Christ, which is eternal life. If you meet the requirement of righteousness. And you will not meet the requirement of righteousness lying. No, you won't. You're not going to meet God's requirement of righteousness lying. You're not going to meet it cheating and stealing and putting others through the storm. No, you won't. Committing adultery and fornication and being fault finders, passing judgment on others and being hateful, misusing others, and so, so, so much more. No, you will not meet that requirement. I want to share with you a couple of scriptures on righteousness. Proverbs 11 chapter, the 4th through the 11th verses and the 19th verses says, Riches profit not in a day of wrath, but righteousness deliver it from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. When a wicked man dieth, his expectations shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perishes. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked coming in his stead. And hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the judge be delivered. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there is shouting. The blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. As righteousness tended to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. That's the word of God I just read to you. Now the word of God told us that righteousness tended to life. So why not do what is right on today and give your life to God? Then live a righteous life, walking upright before the Lord from now on. Don't wait until tomorrow. No, don't do that. Tomorrow is not promised to none of us. If you're saved, please do stay saved. And walk up right before God. Don't hypocrite. If you are not saved, please do get saved. And always remember God's son, Jesus Christ, rose. Oh, yes, he did. Christ rose 